Early into season one of Jujutsu Kaisen, Gojo says this. But is it true? Can his students actually surpass the Satoru Gojo? Your first impression might be no, but I don't think it's that cut and dry. So today we are going over each and every one of Gojo's students at Jujutsu Tech Tokyo to see if any of them have the potential to surpass their teacher. Starting with our main character, Yuji Itadori, and if I'm being honest, he doesn't really have a chance. At least as he is now. As far as we know, Yuji's curse technique is soul swapping, and while it seems good in the current manga, I kind of have a hard time seeing what its combat applications might be. While his physical abilities are obviously stronger than the average sorcerers, they seem to be somewhat insignificant compared to the likes of Gojo and Sakuna. But Yuji was one of the students that Gojo thought could surpass him, so there has to be a chance, right? Well, probably not. See, this conversation was at the point in the story that Gojo believed Sakuna's technique would be etched into Yuji's body. So in this conversation, he was likely taking Yuji's natural talent for Jujutsu, his superhuman physicality, and him gaining access to Sakuna's ability into account. But I think I'm going to leave Yuji as a maybe. He is the main protagonist of a shonen manga, so him becoming the strongest character in the series isn't completely out of the question. Plus, he might have other techniques up his sleeve that we don't know about yet as well. So I don't want to completely rule him out, but I also can't confidently say that he is a yes. Next we have Megumi. Megumi is one of the few characters who have been foreshadowed to become equal to Gojo, as the last Limitless plus 6 eyes user and the last 10 shadows user each killed each other in combat. This means Megumi should be able to become equal to Gojo in theory, right? Well, I kind of doubt it. Saying Gojo and Megumi are destined to become equals implies that all Limitless and 10 Shadows users have the same maximum potential, but I just don't think that is true. We can clearly see that even with a strong technique, the sorcerer using it still matters. Gojo soundly beat Sukuna while he had the 10 Shadows technique and his own technique, so I would say this is pretty good confirmation that he is stronger than the last Limitless and 6 Eyes user, as there is no way that the 10 Shadows user that Limitless user faced is stronger than Sukuna. With this taken into consideration, I highly doubt that Megumi would be able to surpass Gojo, as it would basically mean Megumi surpassing Sukuna. Megumi also seems to lack confidence in his abilities, and I think this is one of the aspects that is holding him back the most. The other major aspect holding him back is his interpretation of his Shikigami. A 10 Shadows user can pretty much imagine their Shikigami in any way that they want, and the interpretation that Megumi chose for most of his Shikigami is kind of bad. Some aren't horrible, but compared to what Sukuna did with them, they just feel really underwhelming. He would really need some kind of power-up after he's freed from Sukuna if he wants to surpass Gojo. And if he doesn't get one, then I just don't think he has any chance. Don't worry, some of Gojo's students definitely have the potential to pass him. They're just not first years, because the last first year also has little to no chance of surpassing Gojo. Let's just be brutally honest, nobody expects Nabara to come anywhere close to Gojo. She doesn't have an impressive amount of cursed energy, and her curse technique doesn't really have any strength compared to the Limitless technique. While Resonance is a good technique that allows Nabara to do damage to any and all of her opponents, Straw Doll in general lacks the offensive power that Limitless offers. I mean, even a special grade spirit like Mahito kind of shrugged off Resonance with very little effort, so I doubt stronger opponents would be affected much at all. On top of this, Straw Doll also does not supply her with any defensive capabilities of any form. This is the main reason that Nabara cannot surpass Gojo. Without a defensive ability, she has to rely entirely on Cursed energy energy reinforcement in order to take hits, and her hit-taking ability already seems to be a big weakness for her. In fact, not having defensive capabilities is the biggest hurdle for most of the sorcerers that we're comparing to Gojo. Infinity is just that good. So all the first years were busts on surpassing Gojo, but what about the second years? Well, they fare a bit better, or at least some of them do. Let's get the obvious flops out of the way. First up, Inumaki. Look, I love Inumaki as a character and for his ability, but like, from a strength perspective, he kind of blows. Cursed Speech is a fairly versatile technique on the surface, but Inumaki does have a few issues. First of all, Cursed Speech is one of the few techniques that can actually hurt its user, as Cursed Speech can only be used as long as the user's throat is in decent condition, and usage of Cursed Speech of course degrades the throat more. Basically, what it boils down to is Cursed Speech is not a good enough technique, and Inumaki does not have enough potential as a sorcerer to come anywhere close to Gojo. He doesn't do anything super well, and while he was the strongest second year at the beginning of 
Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, he just gets out crept by his peers. Next is Panda, and this is another very obvious no. While Panda's technique does not have the limitations of Inumaki's, it's still kind of mid. The ability to switch between the three sibling cores does give Panda some versatility on his offensive options, and his Gorilla Mode actually gives him a great technique in the form of unblockable drumming beat. But beyond that, he doesn't really have anything going for him. His cursed energy pool is kind of mediocre, his physical capabilities seem average at best, and it also does not seem like he has the capabilities to heal in the way that some sorcerers do because he's made of stuffing rather than skin. These two were just overall power crept by the series, meaning they didn't get stronger as new, stronger sorcerers were being introduced. If anything, these two got weaker as Inumaki lost his arm, limiting his hand-to-hand -hand combat options, and Panda later got his two stronger cores destroyed, rendering him extremely weak. Luckily, that is not the case for the last two second years, Maki and Yuda. Maki in particular is infamous for getting not one, but two power-ups in Jujutsu Kaisen. The first comes after Mai's death, which allows the sister to fully manifest her heavenly restriction. This was limited beforehand because the twins split their power, severely undercutting both of their maximum potential. With the proverbial shackles undone, Maki got her first power-up, making her equal to Toji in strength. This was a huge power-up from where she was before, and it allowed her to be a number of grade 1 sorcerers like Noya and Junichi. But she wasn't done yet, as Maki got another power-up in the Sakurajima colony, which far increased her perception of the world around her. This made her equal to Toji in every way. But Toji isn't Gojo. Sure, Toji beat teen, unawakened Gojo, but the second Gojo awoke, he lost. And that was Gojo before truly mastering his abilities or developing a domain, both of which Season 1 Gojo has done. Obviously the domain itself doesn't matter, as Maki is immune to them. It's more about the act of mastering a domain, considering even special grades don't always have them. The main thing Maki has going for her is her work ethic, as she is among the hardest working students at Jujutsu High, if not the hardest working. But work ethic alone likely isn't enough for her to surpass Gojo. He just has everything Maki has, and more. Even if she used some of the best curse tools in the series like the Inverted Spear of Heaven or Playful Cloud, she still wouldn't have the offensive capabilities that Gojo has. She just lacks in destructive output and lacks in a good arranged option. And that brings us to Yuta. Much like Yuji, Yuta was one of the characters that was used as an example for being able to surpass Gojo. And honestly, I think he might be able to do it. Keyword there is might. There are a few reasons I believe this. First of all, Yuta is an extreme jujutsu prodigy. He ascended to the rank of special grade just three months after dispelling Cursed Rika, which is an incredibly short time period. This shows he has incredible potential for growth, especially when you consider he hasn't had a traditional power-up in the way Gojo, Maki, and others have. While it's obvious that not every character gets some sort of power-up, it has been teased a bit that Yuta might be getting one, if he survives long enough. This speculation mostly comes from his conversation with Ryu, where Ryu mentions that he could become much stronger if if he cast aside his humanity. Whether or not this power-up actually happens has yet to be seen, but my main point is that there is still apparently a lot of room for growth for the second strongest sorcerer. On top of this growth, Yuta also has one of the most versatile techniques in the show in the form of his copy ability, which of course lets him copy any technique that he interacts with after fulfilling some conditions. There seems to be no limit on how often he uses or switches between techniques, as long as they fall within Rika's 5-minute connection. This technique could potentially allow Yuta to use techniques that rival the Limitless technique in quick succession, such as the Ten Shadows technique, Star Rage, and potentially even the Slash that cuts the world. All of these pair extremely well with the next aspect of Yuta that gives him so much potential, his enormous Cursed Energy Pool. With the second largest pool of Cursed Energy in the series behind Sukuna, Yuta's Cursed Energy Pool is one of his defining features. It's part of the reason his Curse technique is so dangerous, as the depth of the pool allows him to use Curse techniques with little to no worry of running out of Cursed Energy. But there is one flaw in Yuta's Cursed Energy that could be cleaned up a bit, his Cursed Energy Efficiency. Cursed Energy Efficiency is a poorly defined concept within Jujutsu Kaisen, but it seems to mean using less Cursed Energy to do more. So for instance, the Six Eyes give the holder hyper-efficiency of their Cursed Energy, which gives them semi-infinite Cursed Energy, as the Cursed Energy used by a Six Eyes user for a Cursed Technique is often so little that the user's pool is already replenished before the technique is even finished being used. Obviously, this this is an extreme example, but it is stated that a level of efficiency similar to this might be attainable for non 6 size users, as Sukuna also had efficiency that was kind of comparable to the 6 size. Now, I'm not saying that Yuta would get to that level of efficiency, but based on how quickly he ran through Cursed Energy in his fight 
Kawaii and Sendai, his efficiency definitely seems to be an aspect that he could improve on. If he does improve his cursed energy efficiency, that could lead to him surpassing Gojo since he already has more cursed energy and a more versatile technique than his teacher. But it's still not the final reason that I think Yuta could surpass Gojo. That is his domain. At the time of recording, we still don't know the specifics of how Yuta's domain functions, but we do know that he can imbue any cursed technique that he's copied into his domain, and use any cursed technique that he's copied while the domain is active if he picks up a sword relating to it. I truly believe that this is one of the few domains that can actually pass Infinite Void in terms of utility and strength, because it can literally be Infinite Void and any cursed technique that Yuta wants to use to dice up his opponents. Like, imagine if during Gojo's fight with Sukuna, he could open his domain and then pick a different technique to attack Sukuna with that might be more effective for domain battle than the Limitless technique. Yuta could do that. He can just take one of the best domains in the series and make it better. The only issue with this aspect is how refining a domain works, as it currently appears that Gojo's domain is more refined than Yuta's. We don't know if refining a domain is 100% based on strength, or if it is a process that is different than growing stronger in Jujutsu in general, or if it's based off of cursed energy efficiency, or how good the user is with barriers, or whatever. If it is an aspect of cursed energy that can be trained or honed, then I would say Yuta can probably eventually create a domain stronger than Gojo's. But if it's based on some innate talent, then it's really hard to tell. Now, maybe I'm crazy, but I do think it's kind of likely that Yuta could surpass Gojo. He has incredible talent and incredible technique, and he's only 16 years old. He's got 12 years to get where Gojo was when he said this, and I don't think that's an impossible task for the second strongest sorcerer, as long as he lives that long. Anyway, next is Kirara. Do I even need to say it? They don't really stand a chance at surpassing Gojo. While their technique is decent, it's nowhere near good enough for them to even look at the tier of special grade sorcerers. While most of Jujutsu is determined by a person's natural talent, drive is also a factor, and this is one aspect where I think Kirara really suffers. Maybe I'm wrong, but they seem like the type of sorcerer who only uses Jujutsu when they need it, rather than the type that wants to be a sorcerer. So let's move on to the final sorcerer, and the second most likely to surpass Gojo, Hakari. Hakari is the final student from Tokyo that Gojo believes could surpass him, and he has also been stated to be stronger than Yuta when he really gets going. But there is one glaring issue with Hakari. He's just unpredictable. His technique, Idle Death Gambit, allows him to have unlimited cursed energy for 4 minutes and 11 seconds after hitting a jackpot. This is an incredibly powerful ability, as it allows him to fight without worrying about running out of cursed energy, and he also gains automatic reverse curse technique, which is faster than even Gojo and Sukuna's. So I guess technically he has already surpassed Gojo in one aspect. But in every other aspect, I have a hard time seeing Hikari pass Gojo. The main issue is that Hikari does not have a technique to apply his unlimited cursed energy to. This means he has to rely on close combat to fight, which puts him in serious danger the second his jackpot runs out, meaning that every move Hikari makes is a gamble. Go figure. This gambling nature is a major reason that I don't think Hikari can surpass Gojo. Imagine if Gojo had to roll a dice in order to activate Infinity instead of just always having it active. That is essentially the position Hikari is in. So while he might be able to temporarily rival or surpass a sorcerer like Yuta, his lack of consistency makes it hard for me to say that he would be able to surpass Gojo. Now, Hikari is another one of the characters that hasn't gotten any sort of power up yet, so maybe if he comes close to losing to Uraume, he will get one. There's also a theory that Hikari has an even stronger jackpot after landing a 777 jackpot, so if that theory is true, this might be another temporary way for him to surpass Gojo. But if we have to think about hypothetical theories to get Hikari past Gojo, then he obviously isn't at that level right now. At best, Jackpot makes him among the strongest characters in the show, but that's just not quite the same as surpassing Gojo. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, please be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you again next week for another video.